Good morning, day number two. It is raining pretty hard. As you can see here, there's limited visibility. You can no longer even see the pass we're climbing. <laughs> All right, packing up gear for today. Oh, by the way, Manson's historic camp's pretty good. You got your water source there, you got your bear cache here, um, and then you got the table, you got three tent pads, um, you got plenty of seating. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nine fifteen. We're starting the hike. We are all packed up. It's not raining as hard to start, but uh, we anticipate a lot of rainfall today. And we're gonna hit snow today. This should be a first. I'm gonna start with my poncho and see if I overheat or not. Oh, switchbacks to get out of there. We're already like 150 meters and we're already gassed. It's just wet switchbacks all the way up this hill. Can't believe how tired I am already. This is the story of the hike so far. We're just shy of 300 meters elevation gain and we need a lot of breaks. Let's just switchbacks nonstop. Oh my gosh. All right, we are, we are 1,320 meter elevation and we hit our first patch of snow. Oh geez. And the trail is now a creek. Flowing pretty good. All right, so we are on a snow slope now. We made it to Manson's Ridge. It was 1450 meters elevation. Well, 1459. At least there's no more elevation. As we cross Manson's Ridge, the only challenging part, you can't really tell here because we just passed this part, was uh, finding the blazes. Thankfully, my watch had the arrow which told us which GPS location, but the gentleman who was at camp with us I don't think he went this way because there's no more footsteps and it was very hard for us to see. We wouldn't have found it if we didn't have my watch. So I have a feeling he went down to the river and he's gonna have to find bushwhack or find a forest service road to connect with. But now we're starting to see blazes, but as you can tell, it's a lot of snow. So you can't really see a trail, nor the blazes aside from this one here. Like, look ahead, there's no blazes really. Okay, we've made it out of the snowfield. Now it's uh, just really wet, uh, making our way down in elevation. We actually caught up with the gentleman who left about an hour ahead of us from camp this morning. Uh, he couldn't see the blazes, so he was going downhill and he had to turn back when all of a sudden we heard him. So brought him in and thanks to my watch, we were able to find a lot of the blazes and more eyeballs finding blazes really helped so we were able to clear that but that was actually really hard to identify where the trail led so anyone coming up Mason's or Manson's pass this time of season be wary of a hard to see trail path And about three hours after leaving Manson's camp, we hit the forest road, the gravel forest road. If we do run into him, I think we should We're at. Okay. Colville camp. I got my cold soap lunch. 
we're not going to climb the second peak today because it's going to be too cold at that campsite. So we're going to try and hit Soka. Even though it's an ATV accessible one, the road's washed out. So it should be pretty quiet. I don't think many people will want to come out in this weather. All right, so I've seen at least three of these tent pads, uh, the wood ones, one there, one down near the river. And I saw one over there more. The toilet's there and you got bear cache right there. And there's your water access right there. So our first challenge to exit Colville Camp. It's technically supposed to be over there. As you can see here, that's a little washed out. Just a slow slog, slightly upwards, out of Colville Camp. All right, time to get wet. <laughs> okay, so here's where we detour. The trail up here has some river crossings that are so bad and washed out, they're inaccessible. So we've been told this FSR is the way to go to camp. Seven, eight, 10 kilometers. Just walk a ways. And I think we gotta wash out here. The bridge is washed out, but we have a log that we can cross. So, oh, what a lifesaver. That would have been a pain in the butt. Look at that. We definitely couldn't have crossed this. break grab a cliff bar or something yeah our break is done we've gone about an hour and a half maybe two hours back to camp yeah. <laughs> hey look HPC Heritage Trail this isn't the official route so we're a little surprised to see the sign here for HBC Heritage Trail, but it was recommended to us by some individuals working at Hope Mountain Center, the club of volunteers that maintains the trail. Thank you, by the way. To take this as an alternate because of the washout, so maybe they just keep this sign up as an alternate. Well, we'll be able to cross this. I think so, I hope so. Road's gone. Doesn't look too safe, does it? Bridge is walkable there, it's just kind of sketchy. Off the bridge so I don't fall in, but. Okay, the moment of truth. We're approaching our final creek crossing for the day and I don't know what we're gonna do here. We're okay? Oh yeah, it's not too bad.
the final hundred meters of road before we hit the campsite. So we'll a creek and our friends here, that's good news. Okay, so there's nothing in here except for the outhouse and the bear cache. They don't have pads, I don't think. We are all set up, we're cooking dinner. As you can see here, we were able to get a campfire going, so we we're drying out our boots and our socks and our gear that got wet. Today's dinner, according to Chef Duncan, Alfredo with sausage. We've had it before, we've had pepperoni Alfredo. However, this time we had leftover sausages from night one. So we're gonna try those and maybe add a couple peps after, so. Taking down what I can, it's starting to drizzle. So we're gonna pack up and do our last little dishwash. <laughs> 